Welcome back guys, it's Mad King Corder right here bringing you another video. I decided to change things up from the recent rash of computer videos I've been doing to bring you a typewriter. This is a 1969 Apollo 10 electric typewriter to be specific, and I absolutely love the way this thing looks. The first time I saw one of these on the internet, I knew I had to have one, and so when I found one recently in a thrift store, I snagged it. And besides, for the price of five bucks, how could you beat that? So... This thing is just too cool. I absolutely love the way it looks. It would fit in perfectly with that 1979 Dasher D200 I had a while ago, but unfortunately I don't have that thing anymore. This guy, on the other hand, I think I'm gonna keep. It's a very, very unique typewriter. And I don't know how common they are, but uh, its styling just reminds me a lot of, say, Space Odyssey 2001. <coughs> Or just that kind of modernist phase they went through in the 60s, where everything just kind of looks space-age and uh, interesting. Now, I know a lot of typewriter enthusiasts would probably pass on a machine like this because it's completely plastic construction, but that plastic construction gives this thing a portability that is unequaled by other electric typewriters. I pick this thing up, and it doesn't weigh anything. It's surprisingly lightweight and... Uh, small form factor for a typewriter. I really kind of like it, and, you know, if I had to haul this thing around, it wouldn't have been too bad. And besides, it looks stylish as hell, like I said before. So, without much further ado, let's go ahead and open this thing up and plug it in, and I'll come right back when I have it all on and everything, and I can show you how it works and what features it has. Starting out, I'd like to talk about the keyboard and its kind of interesting design here. As you can see, it matches the overall aesthetic of the machine perfectly. The rounded key tops here match fingers, and uh, it's just kind of nice to type on. The font that they use there is futuristic and spacey, just as the rest of the machine is. And uh, everything kind of feels very solid about it. I like it a lot overall. And... Uh, it works like a normal typewriter would, like you would think. Everything is pretty straightforward. On this side you have the ribbon select. White is obviously nothing, black and red. And then on this side, the on-off switch. This is a pretty standard electric in that it has one through zero on the top there and one fourth there. Everything is pretty standard layout from a normal keyboard you would find these days. There really is nothing special about that. So let's move on to the ribbon spools, because that can be a big deal if you want to buy a typewriter, because who the hell wants a spool of ribbon? I'll be honest. It's a pain, and you get covered in ink. So let's go ahead and look at that. Now to get at the spools, you have to remove the ribbon cover, which is basically the same on all royals I've come across. It's two metal things punched into rubber grommets on either side, so to remove it, you just grab the middle here and it pops straight up and out. As you can see, you got the things there. The larger on the end, they go in there. The spools themselves are metal, however, which means that they're quite quality, but if you wanted, you could replace them with any old set of spools off the internet. Basically, just order a set of universal spools and you're good to go. While we're here, we can talk about the shift mechanism. Now, most electrics are basket shift, but this one is carriage shift, like a lot of the portables and uh, you just press that and it tilts the carriage up which means it is quite easy to get your uppercase letters and things like that you don't really have to mash down on the keys and there's no sort of electric assist for that it's sort of a half and half deal speaking of the carriage if we go around to the mechanism that advances the platen you can see that the first choice here is a carriage lock which means that during transportation you can choose to lock it down so that it doesn't move around after that, you have a one, one and a half, two, and three, inexplicably marked zero. <laughs> so believe it or not, we basically talked about all the features there is to offer for the Royal Apollo 10. It's pretty typical in terms that it has no power shift and no power return. The uh, margins are manual, and it does have a paper holder, which a lot of later electrics did not have. But, uh, to be honest, there really is not a whole lot that sets this thing aside from everything else in terms of mechanical improvements. It works exactly the same as every other one you're going to come across. 
The only thing that I see uh, as an improvement with this machine is the fact that when you turn it on, you can barely hear it running. Every other electric I've come across sounds like you're grinding gravel when you turn it on. So let's go ahead and switch it on and actually demonstrate it in action because I know that's really what you've been waiting for this whole time. Um, so without any further ado, uh, we will begin the type test. So switch it on and as you can hear, it's so quiet. There really is no noise that it's making. I couldn't even tell it was on at first, when I first got it. Um, go ahead and put it in there. And also, I should note that the platen is not dried out on this machine, so I kind of got lucky there. Um, hit tab. Gives us a pretty standard tab. Oops. <laughs> Ran out of space. Necessarily a bad thing. I really like it. And we can get some considerable uh, wrong key speed. Of oh, shit. <laughs> of course. I am not. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and show you what all of the letters look like. Once I get all those typed onto the page, I'll show you what the font looks like. Okay, so here is what the font itself looks like. As you can see, it's pretty typical. There really isn't much unique about it. Um, it looks like every other Royal, basically, and uh, it types basically like every other typewriter. Um, there isn't much to say that's unique about it other than the case itself. Uh, and my complaints about it are basically the same as every other electric I've tried, in that the keys are too sensitive. If I'm typing, and I'm not a good typer, so if I hit the wrong key, I don't want it to go BAM and smack the wrong key on there. But unfortunately that's just the nature of these electrics is that it's going to do that. So there really isn't much to say about it. Yeah, the Royal Apollo 10 from 1969. If you want one, go get one. They're pretty cool, but there really isn't anything unique about them that you haven't seen before. I'm Ed King Corduroy and this is Transcendental Airwaves. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you enjoyed this video, Please like and subscribe and leave a comment because I like to hear that I'm doing the right stuff and know that I should continue making videos like this. Thank you for watching.